This is Mile High. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. Because love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us. And this is going to be an episode of the Mile High Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And I want to make sure you know, as you are starting to listen to this, number one, if you enjoy these podcasts, and I know you do, make sure that you subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get us, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, um, to the podcast. You never miss one. And secondly, you better at this point, since it is June, that you have cleared your calendar, booked your flight, and plan to join us at Altitude on higher ground August 17th to 20th in at Mile High. www.milehighcairo.org is where you grab your tickets. And I will tell you this, the hotel's like three quarters full and you do not want to be off property. You want to be where the action is. And where the action is right now is this podcast. I am grateful to be here with the ho- with my guest, um, Dr. Ryan Bones, who's just making an impact in his territory. Thank you for joining us um, at Mile High Podcast, Dr. Ryan Bones. Hey, thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Daniel. Dude, I'm glad to have you here. So, uh, first of all, let's get people to get to know you a little better. I know you're coming up to us from the uh, California Chiropractic Association event that you crashed there, and uh, <laughs> which is awesome. You and the sushi crew there just decided to roll in, and uh, that's hey, that's the way things go. And uh, let's get people to know you a little bit better. How did um, how did you find your way into chiropractic? Well, it started when I was very young, thankfully. Um, I'm not one of the straight from birth people, but uh, I think I got my first chiropractic adjustment around the age of nine or 10. Uh, I took a charge playing basketball. Basketball has been a huge part of my life and took a charge playing basketball. Hurt my SI so bad I could barely walk. Uh, Luckily, my tiny little town of a thousand people in rural South Dakota happened to have a great straight Palmer grad chiropractor uh, who fixed me up and then I started going very regularly to stay incredible. And as I fell in love more and more with this idea of helping people, connecting people and healing people with nothing more than two hands um, and being able to be your own boss, have your own business, set your own hours, um, I love the idea of chiropractic. I was born on a farm and uh, I knew pretty early on that I needed to be around people. I get my energy from people. So sitting in a tractor cab was not going to be what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And uh, I fell in love more and more the more I dove in. Uh, When I was in undergrad, I worked as a chiropractic assistant um, and got a chance to go to different seminars and really dive in. Um, I'm pretty sure the first chiropractic book um, ever shoved into my hands was Chiropractic Philosophy by Strauss and uh, courtesy of Dr. Pete Wavers in Lincoln, Nebraska. I was a corn husker, go big red. And he started developing my passion not only just for chiropractic but for straight chiropractic, um, for neurological chiropractic, uh, which is redundant, but um, he, uh, he had an Insight CLA, so we used that. Um, I saw the results firsthand and that's where it really, really, really bloomed and blossomed for me is I saw people getting well with chiropractic. I saw the impact it could have on people's lives and I said this is where I'm where I'm destined to be. And so to have that almost my entire life um, is a huge blessing and that took me to Parker where I um, got my doctorate, uh, graduated let's see December of 2015. So it was just uh, about a year and a half ago, and then open practice in beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, April 4th of 2016. So it's been quite the journey. Outstanding, outstanding. I love when you have someone who just goes in from the get-go to chiropractic filled with purpose because it makes all the difference when they hit their ground running when they graduate. You know, um, if they go in with purpose and come out with purpose. And now we see the people that go in with purpose and it gets – educated out of them when I 
and we'd like yes. to see where it gets educated into them but when they keep it from, <laughs> from before and all the way through that's that's even better that's that, yeah that's all awesome. absolutely <laughs> and believe me there was there was plenty of attempts to educate it out of me um, <laughs> But luckily, I surrounded myself with amazing people who kept that principle and that purpose very, very strong. And I do think that we are a reflection of our environment. And so we get to choose who we surround ourselves with and what we surround ourselves with. Because you know what? I know some extremely fantastic philosophical chiropractors that come out of national. Now, yep. I know that's maybe less and fewer and far between, but they're there and you hey, get to Joe choose Mario. Joe yep. Mario, my good yep. friend yeah you get to choose who and what you're around absolutely yep. and so uh, i was lucky to have great influences in my in my life yeah absolutely and 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 so let's delve a little deeper and start rolling here with uh go, going more into chiropractic philosophy and by the way so you're in idaho like i'm from new york and i i still have trouble when i get outside the five boroughs like where is idaho <laughs> Great question. Um, believe me, being from South Dakota and now hailing from Idaho, um, I pretty much always get the, oh, interesting look when I tell people that because nobody really ever meets anyone from South Dakota or Idaho. It's pretty no, rare. I never do. <laughs> right. Uh, so we are in the what was called the inland northwest. So it's just slightly inland from the Pacific Northwest. Um, so Coeur d'Alene itself is way up in the very tippy top skinny part of Idaho, uh, right next to the eastern border of Washington State. I'm about 45 minutes, uh, about an hour uh, south of the Canadian border. Excellent. And this is where, this part of the reason why I asked is because that's where the new um, philosophy night which are going to be happening monthly that we've already kind of messaged about. So I'm kind of putting you that out there that people know yeah. where that will be. I like it. We're putting it in the universe. Um, actually, Dr. Amy Spolstra, who's a great um, influence in my life. She's a Sherman grad, um, another great philosophical chiropractor in my area. Is we, She actually had Epoch. Um, it kind of fell off once she handed the reins over, but we're, we've already talked multiple times about reviving it. And we're actually starting with our teams, and we're actually having a philosophy lunch for awesome. our teams um, here in a month. Because and there we, you go. And as we've been hiring and as we've been getting people in, I've found that it's one thing if I, you know, preach to the team about chiropractic philosophy. It's a whole different thing if another doc or just a couple of us communicated in our own ways. A thousand percent. And that is why I always tell people bring teams to events. Yes. Because if they learn one thing and convert one person better or one person stay in care more because of what they learn there, yep. it's worth the travel. And people yep. underestimate that because they decide that they don't want to spend the resources, but investing in your team is, is vital to your growth. And we have people in our area, like we do our philosophy nights, Mike Lynch, a uh, good friend Mike Lynch out here, he always brings his team and patients to philosophy nights. So awesome. you, know, you, can't, you can't have a movement in a weekend, right? That's why I do the Mile High podcast. It can't be just a weekend, and we got to have it grow by having regular things in the philosophy nights. So, right. okay, now... Um, talking about that a little bit, there's one of the things that you said that really struck me because you said about um, South Dakota and finding a, a great straight chiropractor and then going to Parker and then practicing in a practice, um, that w which was where was it? Was it also in? In, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Basically, Nebraska. went South Dakota, Nebraska, Dallas, Texas, North right. Idaho. <laughs> so, which is this? This is which is this? This is why part of what we do at Mile High, which is this. That central part of the country, you know, like you said, you were grateful to get in contact with like a good straight chiropractor who was a great Palmer grad. That yes. center part of the country was really the heart of straight chiropractic or whatever term you want to do, you know, real yep. chiropractic um, for decades because it's where Palmer was, all the graduates were in those, that yep. surrounded area. And then somehow that became the heart of like mixing land. In the heart of <laughs> allopathic chiropractic, you know, it really did. And then the coasts became where you had philosophically centered things because of Reggie Gold in Northeast, Southeast Sid Williams, uh, Parker down yep. um, in the you know tex Texas area, West Coast. But the center became like devoid of 
like, you know, anything that was a real chiropractic program. And that's why, you know, we wanted to resurrect this here is like, well, people in this area need to have a home. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Which thank God you did. Um, and it's, I definitely, you can tell there's, there's a certain flavor and style to West coast chiropractic associations events. There's a certain flavor and style to East coast chiropractic events. And, um, and then there's a different, a certain style to now, Central, I guess, front right. range, mile high chiropractic, right? Which and, is and, amazing, right? And and I know, and and Kairo Sushi has its own vibe too, right? Yep. So, right, and because there's a different flavors of things presented, so we'll talk about all that. Now, how'd you end up in Northern Idaho? <laughs> so, um, up until two months before I graduated from school, I had no clue where I was going to go. I okay. knew that I was going to open my practice. Uh, I knew I was going to be successful no matter where I went. And I just had to find somewhere that I wanted to live. Um, I love South Dakota. I love my family. I just also love snowboarding and wakeboarding and mountains and lakes and trees. And there's not a lot of that in eastern rural South Dakota. Uh, we always joke you can see your dog run away for about three weeks. And so <laughs> I wanted somewhere that I was really going to love being. Um, and so I was sitting on my couch and I was scrolling around Apple Maps looking simply for basically a lake with a town next to it within an hour of some ski resorts. Um, and I never expected to look at Idaho. I was actually looking at Washington and on the right side of my screen, I happened to see this lake and curd de Lene, and I had no idea how to pronounce it. And I zoomed in and uh, I found this little hidden gem of a community. Um, and it had everything I wanted from location to an airport, location to ski resorts. It sits right on the water of beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene. If, if you don't know what Coeur d'Alene or Northern Idaho looks like, just Google a picture of it. Um, you can butcher the spelling or put CDA Idaho. Um, and it is a green, mountainy, pine tree wonderland with this beautiful blue gem of a lake sitting right there. Um, and it clicked, it was perfect. And so I booked tickets immediately. Flew up two weeks later by myself, drove around for about five days, fell in love with it, decided that this is where I was meant to be, and found my space, found my apartment, um, talked to some banks, and then flew up a month later, 12 days before I graduated, signed the bank loan, my office lease, my apartment lease, and then loaded up the U-Haul December 12th when I graduated and drove straight up. I didn't know one person when I got here. And open. <laughs> and opened three months later. Yep, with uh, with about a hundred people pre-booked, and we had about two hundred fifty people come through the grand opening, um, and really dove in and completely sold out for the community in the three months before I opened, and the community sold out for me. And we Love had an amazing, an amazing last year, and I, I can't be more thankful for the people that I get to take care of there. Love it. And and here's the thing, I want to, I want people to hear that because there's so many fears around opening a practice. Now, I want you to know, everybody's gonna find, I, I wanna say, that everybody's gonna find their right way. Their right way yep. might be starting yep. an associateship, it might be opening an office. They're there's gonna, nothing wrong with any of that. And their life is gonna guide them what's appropriate. However, I, I wanna highlight that, look, you could graduate, go to somewhere where you don't know anyone, right? And yep. you can open an office and have 100 people pre-booked. That's, it's possible. Yeah. It's absolutely possible, and I think that's the biggest message to get out. Um, my father always said the impossible just takes a little bit longer. And so no matter what you want to do in chiropractic, no matter what you want to do in your life, it's possible if you set your mind to it um, because there, there has to be a first time for everything, and there has to be a first for everything. And so um, if it's never been done before, this means that you get to be the one to do it first. So let's help some people out, whether they be – new in practice, their students considering opening, or they're practicing for 10 years and they got to get a, you know, a new injection of fuel. Like, so what helped you do that in that first three months from, hey, I'm in a new town to I'm opening up? I would say there was two key factors that allowed me to resonate and connect so well with the community. Um, the first was going to absolutely every single thing I could find. Um, and I will add the caveat that I was single at this time. You know, I didn't have, I didn't have a family. I didn't have kids. I didn't even have a dog or a girlfriend or anything. I didn't have a goldfish. I could go wherever I wanted for whatever I wanted. 
Um, and so that was an advantage. But right. I was part of four chambers. So uh, all the main community that I was in and the three surrounding communities, I was in four chambers um, involved with Rotary, with a leadership program in the area. And I would, I took all the community calendars I could possibly find in, for those three months. And I started writing down every single event that was going on anywhere. And I went to every single one of them. We figured, I went to something like 70 events in the first three months um, and then posted that all on social media. And so my rule was if I didn't post about it, it didn't happen. Um, and That's my and, saying. If no one yeah. saw it, it didn't happen. Right. And, and I, I worked to build the local audience as I was meeting these people. Um, I was really focused on A, building real relationships with them, not just chucking out business cards and talking about chiropractic, um, but actually getting to know them, learning about them. What did they do? What's their story? How can I help them with their lives? Um, whether that be supporting their cause or making a, an announcement about their event or something like that. Um, and so honestly, basing all of my networking on real connection and relationships and support. Um, and then B, by being extremely authentic and honest as I was out doing these things. I didn't try to make myself um, what I thought chiropractic needed to be or what I thought um, a chiropractor needed to look like or act like or do. I was me. I was just me at 100%. And everywhere I went, I was me, whether that may be at the bar having a drink after the charity ball, I was at the bar having a drink. And I found myself resonating with my people, the people doing things that I would be doing. Um, and these are people that probably are maybe slightly counterculture in chiropractic. Um, my people are not the green organic smoothie. Um, I exercise and run 20 miles a day, um, sort of people. They're the, I enjoy a beer or a, a cigar and a glass of whiskey and they need chiropractic as much, if not more than everybody else. But they're, I think they're kind of a subset of the population that's maybe kind of slightly overlooked. Um, when most people think of chiropractic or think of the typical chiropractic um, practice member or patient. And so as I started talking to them, because I was authentically myself, they connected with me. I wasn't there to sell them. I wasn't there to hand out a business card. I was just there to help them and connect with them. Um, and pretty soon that, I guess, that image, uh, that personality started to go viral in the community. Um, and they really, really glommed onto that. And so if you can do anything in your community, it's, it's show up be authentic, be yourself, and be there for the right reasons with the right intention, which is to truly make connections and and authentically care about your community and the people around you. And when you do that, they can sense that, and they will truly care about you too. Brilliant advice. I mean, brilliant advice, and I hope, certainly hope that people – who listen to this podcast, like share that with their fellow students or fellow new graduates, um, because that little bit there was gold. Um, <laughs> Thank you. No reference to Dan Golden, who got me. Yes. Yeah. Who I really appreciate. Check that. I always put that a little close to their camera. Dan Golden made that for me. And I love when he shows up at Philosophy Night. He's uh, first. I'm like, who is this guy with this funny hat? And then I was like, I really like this guy. <laughs> he is excellent. And I I didn't know him personally until here about the last four or five months, um, as I got involved with Kairo Sushi, and then getting to see him speak in Vegas was phenomenal. Um, the man can deliver a message. That's for yeah. sure. And he knocked my socks off um, a couple days while we were there. And so a huge shout out to Dr. Dan. And thank you yeah. for being such a warrior for chiropractic and for for everything that you stand for, my man. I'm there are not you. many multi-generational chiropractors like him, you know, right, right. Uh, around. And so there's a lot of wisdom there. Um, so moving forward, what do you think makes your practice different? So I think it was a lot of kind of what I just touched on as far as being authentic. Um, and that 
isn't just a personality that I exude when I'm out in the community. That goes through everything related to my practice, from my branding, which is much more young, edgy, modern sort of branding, um, black and white, you know, sharp corners, my, the Beyond Bones brand, uh, the, the watermark, the website, the Facebook page, the Instagram, everything that we do is much more geared towards, I guess, that kind of maybe counterculture or subculture um, of people, the snowboarders, skateboarders, wakeboarders, dirt bikes, snowmobiling. Those are my people, and so my branding is that way. Um, I do not have a spine in my logo or a tree or some hands. Um, you do not see me posting recipes about things. Um, I post about my life, and I post about chiropractic. And then when you walk into the office, it is not the drop ceiling, um, fake ficus in the corner, um, smells like the 1980s, looks like the 1980s. It is... Um, we have this huge reclaimed wood wall, this giant wood desk that has these massive timber beams. Um, we have a fireplace, leather couches, a uh, sports center playing. We'll have, we have beer, wine, champagne, uh, mimosas for practice members. Um, it is uh, the massive high ceiling. We'll be playing anything from 80s heavy metal to Disney music to whatever we feel like that day. Um, it's it's very techy. We have a lot. We have so we have two CLA units. Um, everything from our check-in, you name it, is very tech-based. Um, and then it's just a lot of glass. And we have um, two Thompson pneumatic tables. And so the way I guess I adjust is also a little bit different. Um, you know, and I think also that's why a lot of people have kind of found my practice to be different um, because I don't adjust manually. I reach a lot of people who. Maybe you're just, that's not slightly their style, or have been to a chiropractor, maybe had a bad experience, uh, or maybe were too afraid to go to a, a different type of chiropractor and have found my practice. Um, so the entire experience when you walk in is completely different. Um, I'm in a t shirt and jeans and leather boots, and um, I think people are instantly kind of disarmed when they walk in because it looks like a home, or like a cabin. It looks like a cabin, and it it feels, it smells cabin, and we honestly treat our place more like a family than we do a practice, and people have completely fallen in love with that. And so we have a majority of our practice members um, have either never been to a chiropractor before, went once and had a terrible experience, or were somewhere else and just hated it and found our office and fell in love with it. And I really love serving a group of people that's probably in that 90% of people who typically don't regularly see a chiropractor and bringing them in. And you know what you said also reminds me of one of my favorite sayings, um, which is that uh, authenticity is in, and people want authentic. Yeah. Tick. So Daniel yes. M. Knowles the third, D.C. Um, <laughs> that I love authenticity it. is vital in a practice, and there's so much lacking of that in people's lives. Period. Um, that they yeah. see that they see everywhere. Um, in the world that when they have that in the healthcare place that they walk into it's yep. refreshing for them Absolutely that you nailed it people walk in and they go I just I feel like You care about what you're doing. You're passionate mm -hmm. about what you're doing um, And I can tell that you're here to take care of me. And so whatever you say, let's let's go And, 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 and they feel like you know you own what you do because you're absolutely not, you're not being someone else so right. that's vital yeah. So now let's talk about something else because you're a graduate of Parker, right? Yep. And and Cairo Sushi, one of the things about Cairo Sushi is that it really wants to embrace a Parker ideology or theme or some, from what I understand, some of the original Dan Golden had talked to me about really bringing back some of the Parker original principles, not the school, you know, not you know, original principles. I remember meeting Jim Parker and um, actually spent a lot of time with his son um who was at a lot of programs uh that i was at when i was um coming into chiropractic in school because he went to a lot of the network spinal analysis events um talk a little bit about about that and and how what you Definitely. what your connection with that is so what we found um and i wasn't i did not i did not found kara sushi um, right. that was dan and tim and tristan um but what they found was that there was kind of a void in the profession that used to be filled by some of the more 
core business principles um, that the old par Parker Success Systems and Parker Success Seminars um, used to have. I think there's kind of been maybe an evolution in what those look like now. Um, and so a little bit more of the core business tenants and entrepreneurial flair, um, that is something that they found to be lacking and they wanted to really bring back. Um, I don't think it's necessarily trying to be uh, another Parker Seminars, just take some of that flavor um, and inject it back in. And uh, the whole thing, Kaira Sushi, is supposed to be a fresh, raw take on the principles of chiropractic success that uh, maybe got a little dusty or, or put in the back closet uh, and kind of forgotten about for a little while. It's something that we've really found a passion to bring back to people and found something that people are looking for. Well, you know, I got to tell you, when I went to um, back in the day, Parker seminars. Jim Parker is pretty amazing, and his yes. his his, con his content, his um his her persona was really pretty fantastic. Um, capital T I C there, and um and and it was something that kind of is been diluted or, or shifted a different direction. So it's glad to have some people that were really connected to that um, want to share some of the real. Uh, gold that was in there because there was quite a lot. Oh, absolutely. And um, while we, we really have a more, I guess, from a place of love centered um, approach to really just try to lift people up and help people be, si be successful um, while keeping that core tenant of vertebral subluxation at the, at the heart of what it is we do and because that is what we do. That is what chiropractic is is detecting and correcting subluxation. Right. So let's talk about that, all right? Because that's a pretty big topic and pretty important. <laughs> we'll yeah. Getting back to Just the center. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So here's the thing. Now, why, why you went in on purpose, as you said, right, came out on purpose, and also, you know, Parker has a good focus on that. What um, really kept you into, like, I want to practice as a – straight chiropractor or non-therapeutic chiropractor, the sense of, you know, someone who's wellness focused on adjusting the spine. Absolutely. I, what I found was a, it resonated the most with me just innately in my purpose in life. Um, for example, I do not have the best of diets. Um, I do not exercise a whole lot. And so I could never come from a place of congruency and practice and tell people to eat veggies and exercise all the time. Um, and here's the thing is no one's ever been shocked when they walk in the doors. No one's ever been shocked to hear that veggies are good for them and that exercise is important. And so I don't want to spend any That's time That's the first focus. I've heard that. I've never yeah. heard that before. You've never heard? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, green. Green is good. Uh, so I'm told. <laughs> I don't specifically like green food. But and I'm supposed green. to move exercise? Yeah. Eat uh, something about eating less and moving more and uh, right. putting good things in your body. Supposedly that helps. Um, <laughs> however, how many people have even heard the term subluxation or neurological interference uh, or innate intelligence? What? 5% of the population, maybe ever. And so here you have this drastic majority of people that have this amazing, incredible health tool that they literally have never even heard of. And it's just sitting there. Um, and so I wanted to deliver that to people in a pure, unadulterated way so that when people come out of my office, when they get better, they know exactly what got them better. And when people ask them, why are you better? What, what did Dr. Bones do? They say, you know what? He, he actually adjusted my spine. A radical, I know, concept to hear in chiropractic, but he actually adjusted my spine and allowed my, he said my nervous system is going to be working better now. And uh, that it wasn't actually just um, you know, a deficiency in Prilosec. That's not why I had that heartburn. It's actually just because my body wasn't communicating to itself properly. And so uh, I don't need that Prilosec anymore because my body's working the way it's supposed to work. Um, and he did that through an adjustment. Imagine that. that. Imagine what, that. Ima imagine radical concept, right? You know, so, here's the thing. You would think that that doesn't even exist in chiropractic, 
when you get the types of advertisements that you and I'm sure you get, unless I'm the only one who they send them to, all right, in the mail <laughs> no. for seminars and programs and continuing education. The things I get in the mail is Department of Transportation physicals, um, knee exams, muscle relaxers, elbows, muscle relaxers. The, evolu the future evolution of chiropractic, it's, right? Yeah, I know. It's like mind <laughs> Like, oh, there's not enough, there's not, you know, there's no opportunity for our graduates. We need to prescribe muscle relaxers. Oh, I mean, I, there's no shortage of spines distorted, but there's a shortage of people that know how to address and correct them because they don't Absolutely. learn it in school and there's programs that don't, you know, I, that don't cover that. You know, people are going to everything else. I get things in the mail. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to go to this for CE. You know? Right. No, and and here the thing is, th those people that we're trying to reach, they've tried that stuff, man. They they've been getting medications, they've been getting every other thing, and so it always blows my mind when I I love I love specializing and specifically having people come in the office that have been everywhere, tried everything, been to every type of doctor. Oh, I, I've been That's to my three favorite. other. That's my favorite. I've been to three other chiropractors, so I don't yep. know what you're going to do different. And then I say, okay, well, and did they talk about your nervous system and how that can affect this? And they're like, well, no. Like, okay, no, well, guess the what? Shoulder. They did this thing. On yeah, my they, shoulder. they they put my they shoulder against this. the wall. Yeah. Like you yep. say, did you did they did they ask if you did they check you for subluxations? And they're like, what submarines? Like, what are you talking so, about? Yeah. What? Uh, no, I don't. I don't remember that word. Yeah. And, and so when I do, and they get better. They're a relieved, but they're also kind of pissed off because right. they've been through so much and had something, and I won't say maybe simple, but something that seems so simple on the outside as being the thing that fixed them. Um, and I always explain that that's your body's designed to work normally. Sometimes things just get in the way of that. We do things to ourselves or whatever it may be, they get in the way of that. Um, and that's all we're really bringing out. And and people are their minds are blown. They think that this is a totally new approach. This this radical, different, unique perspective of things. Um, and people oftentimes think it's because I'm a young DC. They're like, well, th this must be a brand new technique. This must be a brand new thing. And I'm like, this is this is chiropractic. And so I always start uh, my day two or my doctor's report with, listen, um, I always like to sit people down. I like to tell them that what it is this office does, what it doesn't do, which is probably more important. Um, because if you walk into 15 different chiropractic offices, you can find 15 different approaches and philosophies and techniques. And so what we do here is we focus on the spine and the nervous system. Right. And people are like, oh, wow, okay, right, different. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and pe but, but people love that. Um, and so that's what has driven me to stay in this arena, if you will, of straight chiropractic, of philosophical chiropractic. Um, and also, frankly, it just, man, it wows me every single time. Every single time I go back and I, and I read green books or I look at philosophy or I just think about the history of chiropractic, uh, it, we are so unique as a profession well, in that what we do isn't just a job, it's our identity. And so I love that, and it's always knocked my socks off. And you know, I'll tell you, it's what my friend Michael Viscarelli says becomes your unique selling point because no other chiropractors do it. Yes, absolutely, and a great friend and mentor of mine as well. Yeah, so it's amazing. Uh, sadly, but amazing. Um, what is something that you'd like to see more of in Tick? Man, um, authenticity, I think. And why I say that. Um, is because I think so many people as they start their practices or as they're going through school um, look to those around them or those who have done it and say I I'm gonna do it just like that um, because I want to be the, the next blank uh, I want to be the next Daniel Knowles I want to be the next Ryan Bones um, and I would challenge I'm them really that glad you didn't say the next Liam Schubel thank you who? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding, Liam. I love you. Um, and and so the world doesn't need the next Ryan Bones. The world needs the next 
you. Yeah. It needs the absolutely best possible version of each and every one of us because each and every one of us is going to reach people differently and we're going to reach different people. If we keep gearing ourselves to the same 10% of people that already go to a chiropractor, we are going to stick with the same 10% of people who already go to a chiropractor. Right. And so that's why I, I love that Dr. Alex Nunn, actually, shout out to Alex, sat me down and made me identify my target practice member, my ideal practice member of who I wanted to see, who I loved seeing, who I resonated with. Um, and then shout out to Sean Dill, Black Diamond Club. That's a, one of his big uh, principles there. And she sat me down, made me define it, and I realized that it was a very different group of people. Um, not the type of people that want to normally come into a chiropractic office. And so I, um, by knowing that and building my, my office and practice for that, not only am I reaching people that maybe haven't been reached with chiropractic, but every single day that I go in there and express this 100% congruency and authentic expression of me, I am so happy and satisfied with what I've built. And I may have had to reinvent the wheel because my wheel's a little bit lopsided, I think, sometimes. But I'm so glad because it is me. And, and I can't imagine doing it any other way. Um, and I hate to see people trying to cookie cutter their way through practice um, when in reality that's not what the world needs. It well, needs no, you. What happens is you have people that they're not being themselves and then they're not even being chiropractors because they're replicating some other healing art um, yeah. other than chiropractic. And then there's no real um, experience. It's all – right. Exactly. And people pick up on that. And I think that's where people walk away from a chiropractic office and have a bad experience. Um, right. And I think that we oftentimes make the mistake of trying to fit anybody and everybody into our personal style when in reality there's going to be people who resonate with me and my style and there are people that are going to hate my style. Um, but. I really try to focus on bringing in the people that are, are, are more congruent with me and my individual and unique, unique style um, rather than just shoving people in the door. Um, right. And as a result, I have people that are happier, that are easier to handle and manage through the entire process. And I think we have just an absolutely incredible um, percentage of people who begin care when they come in for their, for their visits um, because it, this is where they're supposed to be. And, and I'm okay when somebody comes in the door and says, oh, I, uh, I, just, I, I just need to get cracked really quick. And, and I say, you know, I understand that's not at all what I do. I think you'd actually be really unhappy here. Um, but I tell you what, there's another place down the street. Uh, it's called Walk-In Chiropractic. They'd be happy to take care of you. And uh, having that velvet rope right. to say, this is me, this is what I do, I would rather have you happily under care somewhere else rather than unhappily under care here yeah, because that's going to ruin it for both of us. I start, my, um, I start my results review with almost exactly the same kind of statement because yeah. doing network, right? If they expect that I'm going right. to do a diversified move of some kind, not at I'm all. not saying anything about diversified negatively. I'm just, they're just not going right. to be like, what happened? So yeah, you know, I tell exactly. them, hey, this is it. And uh, if you want to find somewhere else, I'm, I want you to be happy with chiropractic. Yep. I'm gladly going to help you find someone else. There's a lot of people. So, you know. Things get hurt when expectations are different. Exactly. And so I love exactly. to lay it out and say, this is what you'll get. This is what you won't get. You, right. you will not have me. I will not be trying to sell you supplements or pillows or colon blast or any other thing. Um, you will be getting 100% of me checking your nervous system for interference, um, removing it if it's there, and helping right. you express life better. Right. Absolutely. So, well, I'm really grateful to get this conversation with you and get this time together in your Likewise. makeshift studio. I love the makeshift studio. I think that's awesome. <laughs> that hey, going. Sh everybody thinks this is a very 
very nice, professional, high quality studio here, yeah, right? Great spotlights and everything. Yeah. It's awesome. It's definitely not a hotel room um, headboard with the lamps on each side. I promise. It's, it's definitely, definitely not, not that. that. Yeah, this is absolutely. very high quality production right here. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you make it out to Mile High because that's going to be, be awesome. Absolutely. It's going to be going to be great. I know Dan's going to come up and visit too. Um, and, my bride and, and, will be with me uh, is, as well as will my team. And awesome, so, awesome. And yep. hey, also, is there any breaking Cairo Shusi news that you want to share? Matt, well, I tell you what, um, there is some excitement in the works right now, which we can't talk about yet. But right. um, next year's tickets, I, I think Tristan put them on sale. Uh, I was, I was. We're, for, for being connected in like two rooms apart right now, sometimes we're, we're a little disconnected, but um, we just got the date set. We just got the location set. Um, and so we're going to be making some announcements about that here really soon, especially after this weekend. Um, we're really defining who we are, what we're going to do moving forward this weekend. And so just follow along. Um, go like the Kairo Sushi Facebook page, like my personal Facebook page, um, the Instagram pages for the latest and greatest breaking news in Cairo Sushi uh, because we're going to have some big stuff coming here in the next couple weeks. So we'll put it that way. Uh, teaser, teaser, follow along. Good, good, good. And, you know, we'll put some of that, when we put the blog post together for this, we'll put some of that information in there. So, so and that will help so people have links to that. And yeah. so I look forward to seeing you on higher ground. And everybody else, if you have not, again, booked your tickets, your flights, all of that, the time um, www.milehighchiro.org. See you August 17th to 20th. We have the, the most stellar lineup we've ever had. And I am beyond thrilled about the weekend that we're going to have. Um, and especially the, the, pe the people that attend are really what make it because I've got to tell you my experience going to programs. I love hearing the speakers. I love getting, you know, the information really some of the most value is what I did get in the conversations in the hallways, the conversations in the restaurant, Absolutely. connecting with like-minded chiropractors um, and, and, and teams. So yep. uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about it. So we look forward to seeing you there and um, everybody who's listening to this podcast, remember subscribe to the mile high podcast. If you enjoy this episode, please share Dr. Ryan bones. By the way, I never told you this. My nickname when I was growing up was Bones. So was it that in common? Yeah, that was my nickname for a long time. So nice. my uncle. But uh, uh, I'm sorry I had to steal it from you. It's kind of <laughs> it. everyone always asks, "Did you change your name? Did you? It, it's, how did you get that name?" And I always say, <laughs> "I was born with it. I come from a very long line of farmer Boneses. Um, yeah. I was just the first one to think Doctor Bones sounded yeah, a little bit better. Uh, yeah. And so I love it." Yeah, and it wasn't a Star Trek influence. It wasn't a Star Trek influence <laughs> either, believe it or not. And um, I didn't choose it after chiropractic. I, I had it before I chose chiropractic. Excellent. So uh, subscribe to us on iTunes um, or Stitcher, and we look forward to seeing everybody at Higher Ground um, and let people know uh, more about the podcast and Cairo Sushi and Mile High and practicing chiropractic with passion because we need to keep changing spines and lives and minds. Like our page on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mile High Cairo.